Where are you going now? All right, everybody. Welcome to the Draw Juice universe. It's me, Draw Juice. You're you, and we're here. I'm broadcasting from <laughs> Northern California, where the skies are orange with fires burning out of control. And, uh, you know, wearing a mask is good because the, the air is a little bit smoky. If we could get those uh, fires under control, man, imagine what Draw Juice uh, live stream would really be like. So I want to welcome you. We're going to have some <clears throat> great art talk today, some critiques and um, good stuff. I'm uh, hoping all of my technical things are good. My microphone's good. Please let me know in the chat that you can hear me, um, see me, and let me know where you're from. Hey, Nick, how are you? Good to see you. So I'm going to uh, jump over here. Fire this up. Woo! Let's get into this. Mamika's here. Oh my gosh, Mamika, what's up? David Stocko. That's a very, very good name, Mr. Stocko. Is it Stocco, Stocho? Whatever it is, it's damn good. Sam Pico, another great, strong name. And uh, you are a strong man. I know this. I know this personally about you. Um, yeah, getting excited. Say something, say something. Say something, I'm giving up on you. Whatever. Okay. So uh, I thought we'd start out with a quote. Because quotes are thought-provoking. And then we'll move into talking about the rhythms of the head that are going to give your head movement, action, and a dynamic quality that just structure alone won't do. And it'll save your... From your drawings from looking like stiff stiffness <clears throat> all right so let's check out this quote from von Goethe from Goethe the limits of my language are the limits of my universe hmm that is thought-provoking you guys let me know in the chat that uh, you can hear me, please, please. And you can see me and hear me. Um, yeah, what does this mean? Also, I wanna know what you guys think in the chat. What does this mean? Why would he say this? Who was Wolfgang von Goethe? I bet Sam Pico knows. Um, but I'm kind of thinking that uh, how do we how do we connect this to art? Well, seems to me art is a language. <clears throat> All right, it's not a written language. It's not verbal. It is pre-verbal. And it is the language of imagery. So, okay, thanks, Mimika. You can hear me very well. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So, um, anybody got any thoughts here? I'm thinking that um, there's a little delay here, so I'll wait for you guys to get to this point. Um, but I think it's really interesting that uh, the communication and words and concepts are the limits of our universe, right? Yeah, David, 
He says, I think your belief system will mark your destiny. <clears throat> okay, so the words and the concepts, the words form the concepts that guide our life. And that's our belief, belief system. And that leads us to a goal, to a destiny. Very good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, so when we come out of the chute, we are, we are unable to talk. And, um, but as we learn language, we learn communication, we start to be able to speak, to write, to communicate to others, to read books. Um, the limits of the universe expand exponentially, right? And as we go to school and we continue to, to build upon our linguistic skills, super powerful. And it seems to me, Goethe is saying that the limits are dependent on, on that, that very development. So language is very, is key. If, um, you know, we can take that and apply that to, uh, to our art because that's a language as well. So the limits of our, our artistic language are the limits of our universe as artists, right? As poets, um, musicians, all speaking a little bit different languages, but they're all pushing on those boundaries of, of the known and the unknown, right? So it's the language is writing that line between chaos and order, between known and unknown, between the right and left sides of the brain. Sampico said the boundaries one sets for themselves will be the limit to one's creativity and thoughts. Okay. Will be the limit. That's true too, right? You can limit yourself. You can limit your language and limit, therefore limit your universe. <clears throat> All right. So let's, uh, let's kind of go into this tonight we're going to talk about rhythm and it's not necessarily anatomy although I've put anatomical écorches here this is an écorché it's basically what sculptors do to study anatomy so it's a French word I don't know exactly what it means but I'm guessing it's kind of a anatomical sculpture and the rhythms are connected to the musculature. We're not going to go into the names too much per se of the Greek terms and all of that stuff. We're just going to draw and connect, right? So we're going to find the limits of our universe here tonight with these rhythms. And my promise to you is that these rhythms are going to help your believability of your drawing, the sense that your drawing is alive and moving, and it's going to help your creativity. So if I'm to take, let's say, the profile view, and I just start drawing, you know, if we if we kind of think about the, um, the rhythms, like the Riley rhythms, you know, think about that, bring, bring that idea, and we just start to find areas where this, where we can draw over the form and connect, connect things. Maybe I can come through here like this and find a rhythm all the way down to the sternal notch and into the pectoralis major, into the deltoid, right? So there's one kind of, you're going to find S curves. Basically, we're looking for S curves or compound curves that are interlocking C curves, let's say. And that does look kind of like an S curve, but it's two curves together. <clears throat> so here's, here's this, right? From the nuchal ridge across the ear to the zygomatic arch into the little um, masculine node there and then underneath the top of the chin or underneath 
the bottom lip. So there's like a kind of a really complex route you can take. Let's go a little bit bigger. Okay. So I just kind of like this because you can connect the head to the neck and to the torso. So it's not just the head, but it's connecting everything. Let's try to find, um, you know, there's this, right? The rhythm of the mouth, the muzzle, right? You have little rhythms in here. Of course, this occipital line here, okay? So I'm just having fun. I'm just finding, discovering for myself what could work, what could connect the top of the head, you know, to the neck. And then through to the shoulder. There's two connections there. This one, this one, right? We have this. This one seems to be going, you know, this way. Can I connect it somehow? Or can I just bring it right in with the others and then come back around? Right, you just look for shapes that are interesting. Like maybe this shape here is something that's going to stick with you. You know, maybe it's this one. And so we're not studying anatomy per se classically, but we're kind of studying the patterns. Okay, let's go over here to, to this one. You know, there's that center line, right? Just tracing the center line connects, which is really cool. And um, again, we can take these kind of things, zygomatic major, zygomatic minor, rhythm of the nose going out here and up and so you can just you know find the muscles and just almost find a rhythm anywhere you know you could trace the surface right as long as you go over the surface and describe it then you can find rhythms within the eye socket. So remember how when we talked about in the course we talked about the eye or the head has three major rhythms or gestures, right? And it's kind of that bulging triangle. Do you remember that? So you have the rhythm where the part of the hair would be on the top of the cranium, the mask of the face, and then that hidden one between the chin and the back of the head. So you've got three main gestures. But now we're adding more. And we're having fun just kind of feeling the skull. Same thing. I've got, I've got this. I can come up this way or go this way. Get the center line. And I can flow from the back to the cheek. wrap around that masseter. All right, so I think this is really, really helpful to connect the head, neck, and the torso. And it helps you kind of to study anatomy, to study the rhythms, find connections where you didn't before. 
So discover them for yourself. Do this exercise and do it, you know, just on a, you can do this on any photo. It doesn't have to be a ecorche or an anatomy kind of a re reference. Um, now, how can this really, how can this help? Well, let's look at an artist here. Any tips for locating eyes? Okay. Well, the eyes are in the center. But let me let me move forward a little bit. But yes, generally the eyes are in the center. So if the head is two or three to two from the front, the eyes are going to be in the center on average. Okay, and there's going to be five eyes that can fit across this way. That can fit from here to here. So you're going to have two eyes in there somewhere. And from tear duct to tear duct, you're going to get an eye in the middle and two eyes on the side. So the eyes are going to be somewhere in there. Okay. Let's look at an artist here, very talented artist. You may know her already, Elisa. Let me know in the chat if you have heard of Elisa. She's an amazing, amazingly talented artist, works at Pixar. I don't think she's an animator. She's probably a storyboard artist, but she may be uh, <clears throat> an animator. But I'm, I don't know that she's doing 3D. But now look at look at how she's using this searching line over this really strong classical looking face. You know, she's kind of just coming over and finding these lyrical, fun ways to kind of go over the planes of the nose. And even find, you know, the side plane of the nose right there. And then she's just moving, but kind of going over describing the form. Right? So even finding textures, almost little cut lines, little interesting geometric straight edge shapes, and then curves. Right? So it's almost anything works. Same thing here. Just moving over the form. And coloring them in sometimes, right? Giving them a little tone. Right? Isn't that isn't that something? Isn't that neat how that works? Kind of tracing the zygomatic arch around to the cheek. It's like a little poem. It's like a little path in the forest, you know, it's, it's, it's a decoration. <clears throat> it's an element that makes, yeah, it's like a dance. David says it makes her, it makes the eye, you know, move, right? It moves, serves as a movement, moving device. It's creates interest. And those are enough, you know, it looks, looks cool. So it's all over the place, you know, here, there, and, you know, look at that. Look how cool that is, right? Bridge of the nose, moving over and down the side plane of the nose, across the cheek. It's almost like puzzle pieces put together to form a whole. Um, look at the rhythms here in the upper border of the inner eye socket, right? Just then there's it's almost like the skull the sutures of the skull moving up on the glabella there right and then just a, a pure pattern right here so um <clears throat> that's how you can connect and use rhythms 
lines of action, gestures in your art. So it's not only, you know, in her face, but look, look at these lines here, this way, that way, right? Those are making your eye move as well. So um, I want you to try it. If you're in the Facebook group, I want you to do some studies like this. Do a drawing, a photo reference or from life, and then draw over the surface of the face. I know it's going to feel scary because this is like ruining a drawing. It's like, where do I draw the lines, right? Well, you have to loosen up and start to just almost just trust your gut instinct. It's not going to be, there's no rules for this. But you have to let your pencil flow over and let your hand and your eyes and kind of be the guide as to where to put these these lines. And you don't have to put them super dark, you know, just put them light. And then see what happens. Right? See if you can make it work. It could be something that you're adding to your arsenal and I I think it could be very again like a poem and a, if you can make your art sing or communicate something other than just strictly that it looks like a photo that's going to um, make people look at your art <clears throat> it's really important our job is to make something look a little bit better than the photo wouldn't you say let me know your comments in the chat what our art is for what's your art for <clears throat> okay so let's see let me do a little bit of um, critiques here and then we'll come back to this idea of the rhythm Okay, so first up here is someone I don't know who has one drawing. And that's totally fine. So let's check it out. Great drawing, beautiful technique. Um, I love the values, love the mood. It's almost like a character because I see there's kind of like an elven ear here. Am I seeing that? Are you guys seeing that? Um, really strong here. You know, on right in here, it's really strong. And maybe it's this is an unfinished drawing, maybe. Oh, that's you, David. Okay. I'm going to rip into this. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, the photo has a copyright. No, I don't care. That's okay. So I didn't see the photo. I'm just seeing this one. So I love the hair. I'm getting some great expression out of your pencil, man. You're squeezing your pencil for all it's worth. I love these rhythmic lines here in the background, in the beard. That's the way to do it. Yeah, right? Beautiful long lines. They're not scratchy and nervous, right? They're just pulling connecting flowing okay a little bit confused about where the lighting is on this one David um, seems to be you know here from the top right but because I get this I don't know if that's a shadow so maybe it's from the top more from the top here because I get this right but if there was that much of a shadow under the nose I think these eyes would be more in shadow a little more like this one um, <clears throat> so not having the photo I think for this level of clarity, it's almost like the light source is coming from the front. 
right because there's not too much shadow so this you know this shadow would be a little more shallow it wouldn't be so so long and that looks better already to me when I shorten that up I mean I could if this could be in the photo so I'm just sort of winging it here I'm just trying to get a little bit of sense of that lip so then I would come over and you know draw the other eye and uh, so that they were consistent I'm just gonna take a shortcut here Let's see if I can do it by digital means and uh, It's going to look a little too symmetrical, but I'm just trying to throw it in for reference. So that, you know, you might want to bring that other eye up to the level of the eye on the left. That makes sense. Pencil charcoal. Grayscale portrait. Escalator says, if you ever got time, would like to do a quick grayscale portrait I don't know what levels of opacity or generally mapping the shapes not sure what that means exactly can you clarify that one um, <clears throat> so already that looks kind of cool you know you could leave it unfinished and bring focus to the eyes and that would be a very dynamic portrait right there you could leave it like that you know uh, And then maybe bring some clarity just to this edge here. I want to see maybe an edge or two holding something together. I don't know where it's going to be. Maybe it's there. Maybe there's one a little bit here. Just to hold that line up because you have it here, right? And I think you need another harder edge and you could you could make it right here right there the shadow of the nose onto that beard to strengthen up the edge and that's good and slightly here I like that already Okay, cool. And maybe you could just bring little areas of realism here and there, like just areas where you draw individual hairs here and there, like you've done. And just, you know. So with, with things like this, where they're kind of flowy, they're kind of half developed, like on a on film emerging from the fog you know take one area and just really go to town with it and then let everything else be these flourishes that just support and a lot of times uh, you know when you don't know what to do with this area here uh, you can find a shape that it can fit in you know like this kind of has this uh, it's almost like these two two circles or it could be one big circle or oval um, or it could be you know this this one it's it's hard to to resolve some of this stuff out here but you know give us a focal point and then rely on some shape design to resolve without detail some of the other stuff so sometimes a triangle will work well right you can fit a head in there 
somewhere. Uh, you could do a reverse. Maybe you could do it like that. You know, and find ways, right? Because though that can flow right into the shoulders um, and the hair. You know, can break the triangle a little bit, but here it can fit right into the collar. You know, this is like a collar. If you look at uh, Casey Baugh, Casey Baugh, he does a lot. He starts a lot of things with triangles. Uh, let's look at that. A lot of his charcoal stuff, such great stuff. He just throw, even if it's an oil painting, he throws in this the shape with that he composes within, and it's a, a lot of times it's his go-to thing. It's like a triangle. Let me see if I can I can pull this up over here. <clears throat> um, that's what I get the sense that there's these you know. See that whole thing is like a triangle. There's the, the lost and found, right? Lost and found, hard edges, soft edges, stuff. Some stuff's very crisp, some stuff's very lost. Look at that triangle, right? The face emerges out of the ether. Here's another one, triangle, roughly speaking, right? Look, this one's cool too, look at that. Nice backlit stuff. <clears throat> another triangle all the wispy um, strokes that are just so beautiful right they're all there in concert in concert they're rhythmic lines moving around supporting they're like little little poems little <laughs> little streams in the forest right little paths, dappled light. Um, so all these this organic abstract brushwork works because it's within a nice shape and then we have a focal point. And so it doesn't matter all this scratchy stuff becomes an enhancement or at least it becomes uh, some noise, right? So you've got uh, the, the signal to noise comes to mind so you have a signal a message you want to get through but there's often noise with it that just comes with uh, the act of communicating or technology or sending a message somewhere right and so the noise becomes artistic it becomes um, at least to me these flourishes are so so cool and that that probably comes from Richard Schmidt because he as a younger artist met Richard Schmidt. You guys probably know Richard Schmidt. But, um, <clears throat> okay, so that was that. Let me let me show you one more, because it's just so, so awesome. Uh, okay, I'll show you this one. <laughs> you just can't get away from these triangles. Right, here's a triangle. And here's kind of a, oh, there's a really strong triangle right there. What the heck? See, Casey, he can't stop. Casey, if you're watching, the triangle's your go-to thing, bro. Okay, here's another one where it's just emerging. Man, I just love that. That's kind of my thing. Best of both worlds, right? You have abstract and lock down realism. That's, that's really cool. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Let me know in the chat if that rings a bell, if that helps. Um, let me get back where you guys are at. Let me check the chat. Es Esquilator, is that how you say your name? Esquilator, shading is what I'm lost at. Deciding what value to use or how to get my values from the reference. Oh, yeah, okay, I get it now. Yeah, David, 
It says Casey Bogg is amazing. Yeah, okay. He did a charcoal portrait of Richard Schmidt. Yep. We're on the same page there. Um, <clears throat> okay. Escalator, I think I understand what you're saying. Um, what else do we have? We have some other art here, I thought. What's that? Nope. Hmm. I think I, I had loaded up. Give me a second. Um. Right here and right here. Okay, so here and here. Let's bring these into Photoshop. All right. All right, Andre, what's happening? Okay, let's do you. Good to see you. Thanks for submitting your work, you guys. All right, hard photo to work from. I'm not sure why you picked this one. Maybe it's somebody you know, but that's really hard because there's no distinct, there's not enough information in the photo. So every, everything is soft. There's no real hard edges. And so that is difficult. It's going to be like a, a very soft painting and you could use that if that's what you wanted to say right soft edges all around let's say you wanted to communicate the personality of this soul you'd use soft edges the femininity soft edges right but kind of what you've done is translated that and put hard edges in there without really kind of being able to see and so it it um, it makes it difficult to do a realistic portrait that way. So a um, couple things is always analyze the tilt first. So you look for the head type, you look for the tilt, you look for the gesture, and I see this, and you have it like this, Andre, right? So you've taken it and straightened it out. And that's what we do um, when we're starting out. We draw things in a neutral position the way we're used to seeing them straight ahead. So if I were to take the camera and put it underneath in an extreme worm's eye view, you would see all these things that you're and angles that you're not used to. And so you would tend to draw the head and bring it down again, straighten it out. Same thing if you're looking down on something. You're not used to that, so you draw the thing. Everything you did would pull your drawing up unless you studied how to do that. So one thing you did was kind of take the tilt and straighten it out. <clears throat> so that's the first thing we want to look at is that tilt. And the shape of the face is, you know, you've got maybe you've got a, yeah, a heart shape kind of like this kind of like a teardrop, not really a heart, but a teardrop. And maybe her shape, her face is a little bit more oval. I'd say. And, um, <clears throat> you know, let's, let's just stay really zoomed out. Then we could talk about, you know, the shape of the hair mass okay so if we let's say we got a the shape of the face right the shape the type was oval could be boxy could be triangular but let's go with the with the oval then we're gonna look at the hair shape so I'm gonna use some straight lines to find that look there's a kind of an angle here that I want to capture 
where her the back of her cranium you know the hair bumps up a little bit so I'm kind of using I'm keeping it really really simple it helps me analyze the shapes and their positions if I use straight lines at first and then I can add more angle breaks like there there and there right as I get more confident and get things knocked into position um, right like the angle of the hair I kind of missed that so I want to bring it out a little bit just finding the basic spacing and placing the the big impression the average angles of things right uh, let's get this here there's a nice little curve there I can lock onto and then straight down so I'm using these you know introducing if something's really obvious like a curve then I'll bring it in you know and then it can help me to get to the side of the face and then that pointed her chin's really kind of pointed and then it moves up and then a straight well you know straight line to there so now I've got the mask of the face and I've got the hair mass and those two things are really key for getting a likeness and I think Sam Pico knows this because I I critiqued his drawing I did a whole lesson and critique on that and so he knows because I I just took it to the mat with that but now you know the top and the bottom right the halfway point is here it's half and half then I would, you know, I'd try to put the eyes in there. Her eyes are a little bit, you know, I'm measuring with my fingers. Yeah, they're basically in the center. I'm going to bring them down a little bit. And then I would just go from there, you know. Um, I'd find the nose halfway. Well, i got to put in my eyebrows here. And then find the nose, which would be halfway from the brow to the chin. And, you know, my laugh lines. I keep it very marionette looking because I can, I can fix problems quick. I can spot errors quickly. If I try to draw the exact outline of this soft shape and the exact characteristic of her nose and copy the photo uh, it goes worse for me I don't enjoy it as much and I slow down a lot whereas if I try to draw the overall big impression like I said like I'm really far away from this person all I can see is dark and light shapes and angles silhouettes then it's it goes faster and I have more fun and I can spot mistakes quicker seems counterintuitive I know to draw like this but that's what I've learned over many years of copying and doing the same thing everybody else does um, make a space for that chin you know, and so I'm kind of just measuring. I'm spacing and placing. I'm not really going for a likeness yet. But uh, they're just kind of placeholders right now. So placing these eyes, right, from tear duct to tear duct, there's one eye. Then there's the left and right eyes in their place. And then you have space for another eye. That's the five eye line across. And that's how you can place your eyes okay um, you know if if you push too close to the side of the nose it's gonna look cross-eyed and so escalator I think you may have asked about placing the eyes right if you go the other way 
too far, then you're not going to have enough cheek. Right? If you put your eyes too far out this way, you're going to have a big, broad nose, and that might look a little funny. So you just you kind of eyeball it, for lack of a better word. Just eyeball where the eyes go. Do a little measuring. And you can find, you know, you can find a connection here between the lateral edge of the eye and the nose. And you can find an equilateral triangle in here, generally speaking, that can help place the constellation of the eyes and the nose together. Okay. That's just something to do very lightly in your drawing to check it. Uh, then once you get this stuff kind of in, you can start to find, you know, this is such soft lighting. There are no hard edges or obvious planes. But I know my planes in my face, so I can, I can see what this, this means. I know what this means here. I know it's tracing the boundary of the front cheek and the side of the cheek, right? The chin box. I know that's what it's doing, so I'm kind of confident it's not, uh, I'm, tr I'm describing the form. And I'll just, you know, I can find, I can start to find the shadow shapes here. Because that's the only thing I can grab onto in this kind of blurry low-res photo got a nice defined shadow under that lower lip that helps uh, we got a nice shadow under the cheek boom 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 like that See how the shadow or the highlight of the head wraps around the head because the head is round. And so the hair conforms to whatever it's on, like, like cloth does, generally speaking. And you can see how the highlight is wrapping around. So use that, you know, to describe the form here too. Um, so I'm not going to go, you know, too, too much further into this, but just to kind of show you how to get going on a drawing and get it blocked in generally, almost like, you know, it's a generic head. It's the unseen portrait that nobody sees. It's the measuring, it's the construction lines, it's the, you know, all this kind of stuff that won't end up in the final drawing. You know, like finding the planes, the boundary between the side of the cheek into the chin box. Nobody's going to see that. That's for you, right, to construct the drawing. And then you bang it into shape, you know. You kind of start to make it look like her more and more. Like you take her lips and you see how wide or how thick the upper lip is and the lower lip. And where the cupid's bow is and then you know how thin or thick the nose is and all that kind of fun stuff and eventually you get to a likeness through all that stuff and um, also all that stuff you can leave it in to some degree and that's going to give a quality to your drawing of being of having gone through time, you know, because people can see the drawing through time as you built it. They can sort of see the light block in. And then the next, the second time you pass through the drawing, if maybe, you know, you've got the gestures, then you've got the um, planes, and then whatever it is, it's showing through a little bit. And until you get to your final flourishes and details and so that's kind of unsubconscious to the viewer but it's there and if they know anything about drawing they might be looking at that and enjoying that as well um, but it's something we don't think about as a drawing it's just a static image but 
you can leave clues as to the passage of time, the model. You know, you took a, you sat there for an hour and drew and took a break and then came back and took a break. And maybe that took you three hours, maybe it took you three days. But that's, you know, that time you can leave clues and that can make it sort of a, a living, moving, breathing portrait instead of a static image. Okay, so that's that's that. I hope that was that was helpful. So don't miss that initial attitude, that gesture, that tilt, right? Left or right, front or back, right, up or down, and then the twist, left or right. Don't miss that, okay? That's your first thing you're gonna do when you analyze the portrait. Okay, what do we have next here? <clears throat> this one, okay, this one was from last week. Thank you for putting it together uh, with the photo. That helps a lot. Oh yeah, we're having a good time. I'm having fun. I hope you guys are having fun. Talk to me. Let's see here. Great photo, great colors. Yeah, nice. I like your shapes. The shapes are, are proportionally very good. It looks like her. You got the tilt, you got the angle. Um, <clears throat> You have a basic massing in of the tone, sense of the light direction. It's a little bit hard this one because it's we don't the light direction is so soft. And if we analyze it, where the heck is the light? Well, it's coming from the front. And how do I know that? Well, you have these really specular highlights right here. Okay that's partly from the front and then we have a heavy obvious uh, shadow right here so there's some light from the top and then there's a rim light you can see that rim on the side of her neck it's a tough one I don't know exactly where the light is so nevertheless it's very it does seem good enough for us for our purposes because there are some nice cut out shadows and things that we can use and see very clearly so this is a good photo in terms of detail in terms of lighting a little bit hard and here's some other clues as I look this this okay so that's clarifying it for me the light direction is top right So you can push in further. Maybe you were unsure of where to go from here, but this is a good beginning. Um, when I squint down, you know, you've separated the hair, local color, dark, from the light, local skin color. That's good. And you've separated the shadow and made it dark. So graphically speaking, whether it's dark hair or dark shadow, it's the same thing, right? Darks are darks, lights are lights. Keep them separate. And that is good stuff. Um, I think you just need to go further with this. I think you can, you know, just keep going. I'm not sure, maybe you just got to where you weren't sure, but, you know, defining the nose a little bit right so we have a sense of where it stops the eyes look really nice you know and continuing on refining the smaller refining facets because you got the big ones and now you're going to go to those medium shapes and then the tertiary shapes so you're going to the primary the secondary the tertiary and then the details and then the textures um so for this one you know i would kind of i'd encourage you just to keep going with it 
I almost feel like I just want to do another, a new drawing over that, or just a new drawing. But I think um, I want to see what you can do with, with it when you go further. I think you, you have the skills to do it. And that's a fact. So I'm just, uh, I don't know, I'm just seeing how this. presents any problems for me. It's got a really long neck. Right, so I start out really sketchy and really blocky. That's why they call it a block in. Um, <clears throat> and that works works pretty good her ear is kind of far back so I want to make that adjustment there and then her nose is like a nice number two and you can see the under plane of the nose side plane and cheek eye socket, eyeball. I always just kind of draw this stuff out because it makes my, every time I do this, I get more understanding of the human anatomy, the skull, placement of things, and my drawing just look looks more solid, you know? Um, and then as I get more solid, over the years, we're talking a lot of years now, I can start to fly, you know, I can start to take risks. And the risks pan out, they pay off, you know, more often than not, of course, they don't all but sometimes you have to work really hard to bang, bang these flourishes and these artistic kind of chances that you take back into shape so that they make sense, you know. Buona notte, buona notte, Alex Lima. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Um, and so these little blockings, they can look a little robotic, you know, especially if I, they can look weird if I'm using the rhythms and or the planes. But I really want to get that sense of the underplane of the chin connecting to the neck. And that's going to give me and the audience a clear sense that we're a bit underneath. A little highlight on the cheek there. There's just nothing here, right? All the pretty women, children, babies. They're not going to have a lot of, you know, this. There's not a lot of obvious planes and rhythms and wrinkles all over the place. So, you know, you can't put it in, but you can look for little clues. Like here's the top of the chin of the cheek, and then it goes to side plane then under. So I can use that little highlight. You know, I can use the shadow of the hair as it wraps around onto the cheek, right? Those are little clues. Make sure that the denture sphere, right, is like a ball. Part of it submerged under the surface of the face. The lips are like, you know, it has a front plane and then the sort of wings are, are in a different orientation. This is front, this is side. 
and they wrap around this thing. So it's wrapping around. So I can use that idea and then soften it up later. Right? I can just come in here and kind of erase it a little bit uh, if I'm using pencil or I can just blur it and then come back in right so much of drawing is just drawing and then reestablishing and correcting things I find and that makes the drawing you know better I don't really see the top of the lip I see this like we covered last time that inner line and then at the terminus there it gets dark at the tubercle it gets dark but up top I don't see much so maybe it's more you know that gives it that feminine quality not that those lips just disappear you know it's very soft Right. Just squint down and see if your edges disappear or if they hold up. And if they hold up, draw them. If they disappear, don't, you know, make that edge indistinguishable between the lips and the cheek or between the hair and the forehead or whatever it is. Um, let's see here. Got a little hint of that masculine node there. And then we can start to humanize it here a little bit by putting the eyes in. Where's that tear duct? Pull it over the eyeball. And the lower one, same thing, pull it over the eyeball. So that's where that the structure comes in handy and it you start to describe the form really well for people. And it looks cool and it's it's fun, you know. And then I'll put in a sense of the iris there. You don't see the whole thing, right? It's eclipsed by the upper and lower lids Let's see here right so having fun cleaning things up and yeah <clears throat> the ear, something to memorize, I think. It could be like a letter D, you know, uh, or a letter C with a letter Y inside. That can get you by. There's great utility in that. And then you can, you know, put in the anatomy later of the ear make it look like a real ear so I think you're kind of into you're halfway into this drawing slash painting and um, you can go further you know you can work on the detail of the eyes underplane of the nose uh, lips are pretty good maybe they're a little dark or you can just darken up give yourself a core shadow so that now you have a reflected light right there right and then the cast shadows a little bit darker edged and then here's a form right next to it right right there and see that brings a lot in if you know what you're looking for you're not far from bringing this thing into 3d realm in a, in a convincing way Let's see 
but it's subtle it's work because she has no boundaries no markers that you can really hold on to so much there's a little bit darker on the cheek a little bit darker here I think you could move the ear over just a little bit because she has her her cheek is too wide so I'm just gonna I, move it over just a little bit I screwed that up too much real estate there so you can Okay, so keep on going with this. <clears throat> I say, we just finished a head drawing challenge in the Facebook group. And that, or no, it was the, the hands, 100 hands. And man, that was a workout. Right on, Mimika. Did you enjoy that? Mimika did a great job in the hand drawing challenge. Her hands were all beautifully posed and she had colors and she really went to town. It was really, really fun to see her just go off, you know, and, uh, and learn and get better, you know. And so I don't know what the next challenge is going to be. I need some suggestions about what that's going to be anyway just fill in your shapes fill in your darks and see if the whole design is working you know A lot of times at this stage, you can spot errors because you can see clearer when you see the dark and light pieces or shapes more clear. <clears throat> you can see that shine on her hair like that. I could bring in, you know, some really subtle modeling, right? Like that value of her skin is kind of a number two. And I can cover the whole thing with that local value. Right? Her skin is not bright white like this paper. If you sample it, see where it is on the color block? It's up there like 10%. Right? So that's like a value number two on our value scale which we usually have right here look at that I got it oops so the value scale is going to kind of help you can map these values to your drawing with just five values where's my drawing there um yeah so if you're having trouble with values just you know map them like the highlight that's value number one and the skin is like a value number two um then it goes into shadow that's kind of a a value for and dark shadows or occlusion shadows are value five and three could be you know in this in the eye area lips right you can just sample that see how dark they go if they match that hair is pretty dark right and so just use five values and and don't kill yourself you don't need 10 you don't need a hundred you just need five and then you make the transition between areas with half tones and so uh, that's 
What's it? If you have good shapes and good values, then you can start to make it look 3D. Those eyes look a little bit funny. Um, but that sort of like idea of big form modeling, so if I take that value 2 or maybe value 3 and then I could start to push the values a little bit so that the neck becomes round, right, like a cylinder. I'm just giving that hint of that. I'm not going for the pupil and the uh, hair, individual hairs of the eyebrow, the nose holes. I'm not going for that yet. I don't want that. I want the impression of this thing um, popping off the page or the impression of a person somehow there, you know. Um, I don't want to jump too quickly into details. No way. I'm not making that mistake. Um, look at it, even her nose has that has a value on it. Anyway, this is getting messy. I don't like it. Phew. It's going to take some work. Right? going to take some erasing and some drawing again. I'm just like you guys. I got to do the steps. Can't rush it, you know. If it looks dirty, like it's because you're out of value. Your, your dark half tones got too dark. All right, I'm going to stop that. So anyway, let me see. Let me check the chat. Next week, we'll start with oil. Ooh, David, you're a madman. Good for you. That's cool. Um, so let's see here. That might be about it. I don't think there was any more people that submitted stuff. And so that, let me just say, guys, if you want to uh, join the Facebook group, it's awesome. There's 3,600 people in there, probably more, and people are just learning and growing submitting their work look at that look at this great stuff man so i would suggest if you're having trouble with values or anatomy or shapes get in the group start posting and start you know getting answers and start you know this is the perfect place to do it if you want to take my course uh it is also available portraiture and uh, I worked so hard on this course this is like the best course I could make and there's the boot camp the mentorship and the VIP uh, there's uh, I've got my book hair drawing course I'm building out this more and more so you know come on by join the Facebook group you know at least get the course if you're struggling um, I'm on Instagram at draw juice where else am I I'm on YouTube you guys comment like subscribe all that stuff that really helps me out and tremendously I'm so glad you guys are here and um, to just hang right so I will sign off and see you guys next week.
check the chat real quick. Yeah. Sam Pico, you are welcome. Mimika, you're welcome. Thanks again for coming. Let me know what you'd like me to cover too in the in the comments uh, on my live streams Wednesday. And I'm doing a live stream Tuesday afternoons too, maybe morning afternoon, just for figure drawing and maybe some other stuff. So you guys come by and visit me there. Again, let me know in the chat what you'd like me to cover for next time. And um, submit your work and all that good stuff. Okay, you guys. Peace out. Lots of love. Be good to each other. Be kind to each other. Be charitable. And uh, be safe. Okay, and we'll see you next time. Ciao.